All right, guys, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and replace the two knock sensors on here. Uh, first off, you're obviously you're going to go ahead and remove that top cap there. Then we're going to remove the snorkel that attaches the air filter. Obviously doing this in high speed so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but I did record the whole thing just so you can see what I'm doing. So we're at 4x here, so it's going to go pretty fast. All right, so that's been removed. We're going to go ahead and take the battery loose as well, negative terminal, just to make sure that nothing happens while we're you know messing with the wiring here. Uh, there's a cap here that secures that top cover, so we just need to take that cap off. It's, uh, I believe it's 10 millimeter uh, little bolts on there. You'll need a, a box end for that back one because you can't really reach it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that eventually. All right, so next step here, we're going to go ahead and start tracing back the wiring. First thing I'm going to do is find the knock sensor wire, and that's right there, and compare it to the new one, make sure it matches. There's several different ways that you can go ahead and remove the throttle body here but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take the throttle body loose and then I'm going to remove the electrical connector and the coolant line. There's two coolant lines, one going in, one coming out. And what you really want to do here is make it so you just put you can pull it away. Now, there's my neighbor giving me a little bit of uh support there by <laughs> watching. So it, it has a connector on it where you have to pull one connector away and then you can pull the clip off. So just be aware of that. You can't just pull um you can't just clip it off. So once that's done, we'll go ahead and move on. Actually, you know, I skipped uh, along here because I was doing something else. I was, I think I'm tracing back the purge valve. So I've disconnected the purge valve, I believe. And then there's the harness, the bolt that holds the whole harness on there. So I've gone ahead and pulled that as well. I kind of bounce around here. I, I think that I probably should have just gotten the throttle body out of the way, but I think there was a reason why I got away from it. All right, now I'm removing, that's the purge valve on the top there. So now that's loose and taken off. All right, now I think I'm gonna work on this. Am I working on there? What am I doing? Yeah, so now I had to get in there to get that uh, coolant line off, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt and it's gonna leak, not a considerable amount, but there's gonna leak some antifreeze out. So be aware of that. So once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and there's a breather on this side. There's a breather on both sides of the valve cover, so you'll have to do each one individually. So it's kind of a pain. He's a flat screwdriver and just kind of pushed it off. So I'm just kind of eyeballing here and seeing where we're at. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward here. I'm going to start removing the wire harnesses off the fuel injectors. There's several ways to remove uh, the fuel rail. The easiest way is to go ahead and pull the harness off of each of the injectors. There's a plastic uh, protector clip on each one of those injectors that you'll need to pull away first before you can actually uh, remove that harness itself. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I'm not going to actually remove each indiv individual injector or remove the fuel pressure off the line. What I'm going to do is just unhook the harnesses and then unbolt the two bolts that hold the entire fuel rail in place and just move them out of the way. That way you don't get fuel anywhere and uh, it just kind of goes right back together. You don't have to worry about making a big gasoline mess. But just take your time for each one. Uh, the plastic can be brittle, and if you squeeze that too much or you even feel it, if it feels like it's it's brittle, just be very careful not to break it because it may not hold back into place when you put it back together, and that's going to cost you some time. So if your vehicle's ever overheated before or is running in a very hot environment, that may be an issue that you're going to run into. So I'm going ahead and move on to each one of these. There's eight of them, obviously four on each side. Okay, now that that's off, I'm kind of looking around here. I think I'm looking at the harness. There's two um, retainer clips that are holding that harness in place. So you're going to have to use a flathead screwdriver and gently pry them off so that that harness can pull away. Otherwise, you're going to be tugging against it. You don't want to do that. Um, it looks like, what am I getting over at this side? Oh, those are the, I'm getting the fill injector rails off. There's two bolts that hold it down. And once you remove the two on each side, a total of four, the fuel rail will actually just lift off of the intake manifold. That way you're not, you don't have to remove the fuel pressure or anything like that. You just lift it off. You, once you get it off though, you do want to be careful with it. You don't want to damage any of your injectors, but this is the fastest way to do this. So now it looks like all four are off. Kind of taking a look around. And I'm going to go ahead and lift that off. Uh, what am I doing back there? Oh, that's that breather in the back. I think I hurt my hand doing this because <laughs> my tug didn't smack my hand, which hurt. So I did that. I think there's a mass, uh, mass airflow sensor in the back there too that I disconnected. 
um, and there's lifting the harness off. So there was two cl retainer clips I was talking about. Like I just removed, I'm removing the clip off the, the wire harness off of the alternator as well. So once that's done, looking around, making sure that I'm all clear. I mean, you're going to take your time. You see how easily that lifted out. That just popped out the uh, fill injector rail. And I'm lifting it up to make sure I have enough space to lift it. And now I think I'm moving on to the coup de gras. I'm getting the eight bolts, or sorry, ten bolts out of the uh, the intake. And this shouldn't take long. I have an electric uh, ratchet, but I just want to show that you guys can do this all with hand tools. I didn't you really use anything fancy here to do this, so you don't have to really worry about that part. So moving on. Uh, this back one's a little bit tough to get. I actually had an extension. I think it was a five inch extension. It actually worked out perfectly. It wasn't too tall that it wouldn't um, fit in the back there, but it was short enough that you can, I mean, sorry, it wasn't so long that it wouldn't get through and it wasn't uh, too short that you couldn't pull the bolts out. On these bolts too, you got to remember that they kind of have a crown on the inside, so you can't really lift them out unless you kind of move them, wiggle them around a little bit. You don't have to take them out completely in order for you to get the intake out, but uh, you should maybe just not to scrape the aluminum heads when you go to pull the head out. I mean, pull the intake manifold out. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to lift up the wire harness, the fuel injector rail, and the purge valve assembly to allow me to clear it to remove that intake manifold. And you can see right now, I'm, I think I'm getting the last one out. Kind of look it around, lift right it up, and just make sure everything was loose. And you should probably really use two people to do this. It's not too heavy, though. And then you can see I just was able to lift it out. So there it is. It's all out. And the first thing I'm going to discover is it appears that some kind of animal was living inside the intake manifold because there was acorns and feces. So we're going to have to bust out the shop vac and go ahead and start cleaning this up. Make sure nothing falls into the cavities of the valve, cover, of valve train because you'll have a bad time if that's what happens. So I'm going to take off the covers here. There's two covers, and that's where your knock sensors are. We're going to take a closer look here. As you can see, uh, it's that back one that's the fender. I do believe that's the bank one. And the front one, not as bad, but it did have water in it. And I'm very glad of how clear that valve train is. It's very clean. But um, I'm going to have to pull the harness out. And there's a good reason why you want to replace the harness. You can see it is in horrible, horrible condition. So... Now that I have that out, I can actually remove the actual knock sensor, which is in terrible condition as well. So once that clears out, you'll see water got in there. If you wash your engine off, this is probably what's going to happen to you unless you do a modification to keep water from entering that cavity. So I'm going to take the other one out. It's not in as bad a condition, but it did have water in there. Eventually, it would have ended up the same way. Um, here's some uh, video here of what it looks like inside. That's a clean cavity. It's still water in there, but it's a clean cavity. And here's a cavity that had a bunch of water in it. And you can see all the corrosion and everything that's happened to it. Okay, so we got a good look in there. Make sure to clean out all of the residue and the water and the gunk out of there. Use a rag. And when you get most of it out with the rag after that, it's best to go in with some Q-tips. And just make sure you get everything out of there because if anything remains, it's going to ruin your uh, new brand new sensor as well. And you're going to lock it in, lock in the flavor if you use RTV sealant to put the caps back on to cover uh, to seal the cover from additional water from getting in. So just keep that in mind. So uh, I made video here of me putting those caps in with the RTV sealant, but fortunately it got deleted on accident. So. Here we go. I got a new intake manifold gasket. I'll put the number up here in just a second. But uh, apparently Felpro makes a gasket that doesn't fit properly. And I spent probably about a half an hour trying to, like, ready to freaking pull my hair out, trying to figure out why it wouldn't go back in. It has guides where pretty much like dowels that, uh, that allow the intake manifold to be put back in. But for whatever reason the moldings bad or whatever but it did not fit i was sitting here fighting it I actually shortened this down because i'm sure you didn't want to see me cursing because i was not in a good mood sitting there messing around with this damn thing so i went ahead and went back to the old gasket it wasn't in bad condition i was just going to replace it just because but you know it wasn't dried out or anything so i just had no choice i mean if if felpro doesn't make a correct gasket then i would have to go to in a you know to the dealer and went doing that 
So look at that first try just dropped right back in. So there was definitely something wrong with that stupid gasket and it was definitely wasting my time. So I just want to give you guys a heads up with that if you end up running into the same problem. So I'm looking around, just making sure everything went back together. I also made sure that nothing fell into the engine. That I, You guys really need to do that because I've had that happen to a friend of mine. And it's a really scary thing to have happen. It starts your motor and something gets sucked into that valve. So just make sure no nuts, no bolts, nothing gets dropped into that, uh, into those, uh, into that, um, sorry, into the head. Because that could be just catastrophic. So I'm looking around, just making sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. And then I can start putting the intake manifold back on. So now I'm getting the bolts back in there. And you just want to go ahead and start like kind of diagonally or across from each other when you start putting the bolts back in. And you, I have the electric ratchet now, so that's going to make my life a little easier. I'm not tightening them all the way down. It says that it wants you to do it in two waves. So you just want to start from the middle and work your way out and just put them on there snug. And then after that, you can go ahead and start doing the torque spec. And I'm going to show you guys that in just a second here. Please keep in mind, this is inch pounds, not foot pounds. So 44 inch pounds is divided by obviously 12. So it's not going to be like a ton of torque that you're going to put down there. And a lot of people make that mistake not knowing it, but inch pounds is a lot different than foot pounds. You put 89 foot pounds on one of those bolts, it's probably going to break your intake manifold. So just be very cognizant of that. It's going to be a lot of things on this motor are going to be inch pounds, not foot pounds. So if anything ever sounds weird, always make sure to look for that IN on the torque or torque spec. So now I've gone ahead and went through the torque uh, pattern and tightened it all up back up. Now I'm lining back up my fuel rail and you just want to get each side balanced and you can go ahead and just press it on there and then you can go ahead and put the four bolts back into it which it looks like I'm going to start doing here in just a second. Oh, I'm pulling that the brake booster line on the back side of the intake manifold. We didn't talk about that a second ago but it goes it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it to go back to where it needs to go because it kind of gets trapped there. So you're just trying to push all the wiring harnesses and tubes and everything back into the places they were when you started so i think i've gone ahead and done that where did i go i'm coming back there we are okay now we're putting on the fuel rails so yeah there's four bolts obviously one two three four just make sure that you have the things positioned correctly you're not forcing anything together that'll definitely help so i put the purge valve back on there just one bolt that goes on it and you're just working off a of memory. If you haven't done this before, I suggest getting a blue tape and blue taping everything that you removed just so you can remind yourself what needs to go where. And it means putting blue tape on each side of uh, what you disconnected. And that will definitely help you to try to remember. Over time, when time passes, and if you do the project the same day, usually you can remember where everything goes. So and it always helps to have an owner's manual. I mean, sorry, not owner's manual, a repair manual on hand as well. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to go ahead and start putting the wire harnesses back on and reconnecting my fill injectors. And you want to obviously make sure you take your time, make sure they go on right. Sometimes they, they don't go on like uh, you would think they would go on, would just slip on. You have to actually make sure they're centered before the wire harness will go on. So just be aware of that and take your time. Don't force anything. Just take your time. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way around. And you can see the harnesses are pretty easy to track back. Um, even though you know you've moved them around a quite a bit to get the intake manifold in and out of there, um, you just like I said, take your time. Don't squeeze anything too hard. Don't force anything, and it should just go right back together. So just get, just make sure, just take your time. So while we're doing this, we'll probably talk about the fact that um, it, it it's better to have two people when you're doing this. I did this mostly by myself. Um, I should have wore gloves, but it it it's hard to control the camera and do that at the same time and have to kind of run back and forth so I let my hands get get beat up pretty bad and unfortunately that's my fault and I would suggest if you guys are going to do this wear some gloves it'll keep you from you know stabbing yourself or you know messing your knuckles up so uh, that's the bolt that was holding the harness on on the top there so I just I kind of stop every few minutes and I just kind of take a visual look at what where I'm at so just make sure nothing's different you're not going to have this uh, throttle body off too often, so you probably should clean, use some throttle body cleaner and clean the back of the throttle body before you put it back together. 
And uh, this gasket was also in good condition. This, uh, I believe this is like a Viton material, or it's a very high end material because the the gaskets are actually in excellent condition. And you can replace them if you like, but I really don't think it, it's really that needed. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the three, or three or four nuts that hold that thrall body back on there. And then I'm going to reconnect that coolant line on the bottom. You'll need to add a little bit of coolant to offset what you lost when you um, disconnected it. So you'll need to do that. The clips that are on it are kind of a pain in the neck to get on and off there. They're very wide and open so that you'll need a, you know, a pair of pliers. I use a pair of long needle nose pliers to get it because that's the only one I could use that could get all the way around there and uh, make the clearance on it. And then I use the flathead screwdriver to kind of push it back into place. So as you can see, I keep stopping and just kind of visually checking where everything is and just making sure I'm not forgetting anything. And you're just going to, you know, human nature, you're going to forget something. So you'll probably notice that as soon as you try to start the truck up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening up the throttle body here. Once that's done, I'll pick up my torque wrench and tighten that up as well. All right, so I'm just verifying that the connectors are on there. So the, the harness is now connected to the throttle body. And I think it's time to st start it. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, probably should put that on first. I think some guy stopped and was asking me some questions, but uh, now I'm back to work here. So I can put the uh, air hose back on there. <laughs> air hose. I guess you'd call it snorkel. I forget what you want to call that. Anyways, it's it's just it's reconnected. I'm verifying that all the harnesses look all right. That everything looks like, looks like it's been connected. And with that, I think I'm going to connect. Yep, there's a negative battery terminal that's now uh, connected, and now I can go ahead and start the truck for the first time. As soon as I finish doing that. And I think I, I, I believe that I forgot to hook up the breather uh, line on the on the left side. So I'll start it, and I hear a noise immediately. Shut it off, and I'll realize it. And it's like I'm like, what is that noise? And sure enough, that's what it was. So I reconnected that, and I think we're back in business now. I go ahead and start it back up again. I think everything sounds good. At the end here, you'll you'll hear it running. I I cut the audio out of this because there was a baseball game going on uh, over at the college across from my house. So I just wanted not to get that audio captured here. So I'll shut it off and I'll put the all the covers back on, and then I'll do a final start. And once that I feel like that's I'm comfortable with that, I'll go ahead and uh, start it again and take it for a test drive. So I think I'm pretty happy. Everything sounds good. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the cover, uh, that, see that little uh, spacer cover on the top there. And that holds that um, final cover in place. Once again, this is the one where you'll need a box in because the back uh, bolt uh, it won't clear. So you see, I use my ratchet there and then the back one, I'll have to get a box in to get to it. So I'll get the final cover. I'll put that on. And I think that we're done. Thank <laughs> you.